Are you ready to start a YouTube channel but you don't even know where to begin? Well today I'm going to be showing you my 12 step creative process from video idea all the way to published video so stay tuned for that. Hey what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Boss Tip Thursday where I share tips and tutorials to help you get things done. And today I'm going to be sharing my content creation process because I know when I was first getting started, this was uh, one of the things that held me back along with being afraid of speaking on camera. It was that I didn't know where to start. I was afraid of doing it wrong and I just wish that someone could walk me through the process step by step. What am I supposed to do? What are the do's and don'ts? So I know a lot of you want to start or grow a YouTube channel and I have a lot of helpful tips for you today. So let's get started. Step number one is to pick a video topic idea. And I keep all my ideas here on this Trello board. I've talked about it in other bit videos before about how to use Trello and how I use it to create my content. So make sure to check out the description for more videos on this. But basically, no idea is too dumb for me. I read many books, listen to podcasts. I consume a lot of information. And anytime that any of those things trigger an idea that I want to talk about, I write it in this Trello board. And I have... It divided into different categories so I have productivity health motivation book reviews uh, business finances and so many other things and on Mondays I like to make like mindset type videos productivity on Tuesdays I make more tutorials and business tip type videos so I just choose one that resonates with me the most and I also want to show you here on my channel I have a a playlist called video ideas so those I add videos as I'm watching other uh, creators if any of those look interesting to me and it's something that I'd like to recreate or I want to give a different side of it I go ahead and add it to this playlist video ideas so that's another way that I um, come up with ideas and if you're interested in learning more about this you can go watch this video how to find content ideas for your blog or YouTube channel this really gives you so many ways that you can find ideas for your audience specifically so if you're looking for help with that check that video out any videos that I mentioned today any resources or tools will be linked down below step number two is to craft a video title there are two reasons why I like to create a title before I even sit down and record a video. The first reason is because it serves as my guide. It keeps me on topic and it helps me provide to the viewer exactly what the title promises. And then the second reason is because it uh, gives me the chance to incorporate keywords into my title. That way YouTube will show my video to people who are looking for this topic. So the first thing that I do when I start uh, crafting my video title is come on to YouTube and search for the keyword so how to focus is a video that I did today so I'll type in this into the search box to see what I'm working with so the first thing that I see is that there are 32 million videos over 32 million videos on this topic this means that it's very 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 competitive especially for a small channel like mine channels that have over 400,000 subscribers or even a million, this is a piece of cake for them. But for my channel, I need to look for something that's much smaller. And then um, I look at the YouTube or the, or the TubeBuddy stats. This is a plugin. It's up here called TubeBuddy. It's free and it gives you all of this cool information that you can use to make wise choices when you're trying to come up with a video title. Basically, what you're looking for is a a uh, title that doesn't have that much competition something that encompasses what you want to talk about but at the same time the competition is low so that's what you're looking for and TubeBuddy tells me that the search volume is good but the competition is bad or too high I should say and so here's the score 13 out of 100 it says I shouldn't go for it and it just gives me a lot of other useful information here 
And then what I'll do is just play around with this title a bit and see what I can find. So if I type in another letter, you see YouTube gives me all these other things that I could work with. So let's look at how to focus and concentrate. The competition goes way down. Now it's a million. And then if I tell TubeBuddy to show me the score, now it's at 69 out of 100, which is way better. So I just play around with this a little bit, look for different keywords that don't have a lot of competition. And then as I'm doing this, I open up a Evernote notebook and I just make note of the different title ideas, the possibilities. And at the end, I just pick one that best encompasses what I really want to talk about and that has the least competition. It doesn't always work that way, but I just do my best to pick what I can and go with it. In this video, how to grow your YouTube channel, five tips to get your first thousand subscribers, I go into a little more depth about how to do the keyword research and I share some more resources with you. So if you're interested in that, go check that video out. Step number three is to look for tags. Tags are very important because it gives YouTube a little more information about what your video is about and who is a good uh, fit for your video. The title already does that, the description does that for you, but tags also help. They're not as important as the title and the description, but when you're trying to grow a YouTube channel, every little bit helps. The first way is by using this search bar again. So as you saw earlier when I entered this A here, YouTube gave me all these different options to work with. So if I don't use them as my title, I go ahead and use them as tags so that my video can show up for these keywords possibly if no other matches are relevant. So I use that. And then another way that I find tags is by clicking on some of these top videos. And as you see here, TubeBuddy helps again. It gives me a lot of different analytics for this specific video. It tells me the shares, the views, and so many other things. And it also shows me the the tags and it tells me how well they're doing with each of those tasks so I'll use each of these videos I'll click on each one and then pick the tags that I feel fit my video step number four is to create an outline so now that I know exactly what I'm going to be making my video about I come on to Trello create a board for it and put the specific title at here just so I know exactly what I'm working with most of my videos are in the form of listicles, so there are a certain number of steps or tips that I'm sharing to help the viewer gain a certain benefit. In this case, it's um, tips to help you focus. So I'll go ahead and list out some that come to mind up here. And then at the bottom of each of these lists, I write down just different points that I want to make, different things that come to mind. And then at this point, I will also do a little bit of research if a quote, an article, or a book come to mind that I want to mention, um, I will research it just to make sure that I'm referencing it in the right way and also to add the link to it in my description. And the basic idea of this is just to get a rough outline of what I want to say. It's not going to be like a script that I have to follow all the way to the T. It's just a rough outline so that when I sit down and record my video, I don't go on these long tangents and I just stay focused and say what I have to say in the least amount of time possible so that the viewer can benefit from the video without having to listen through all these unimportant things. Step number five is to record the video. So now finally after all the research and the preparation is done, I can start to record the video. And currently this is the camera that I'm using, the Canon PowerShot SX420. It was just $230 uh, on Amazon. It's the most basic camera you could possibly get. It gets the job done. And that's basically what you want to do when you're just getting started is to keep your costs as low as possible. You don't want to go out and buy this thousand dollar camera right off the bat. You want to just slowly move on up because there is a learning curve to all these cameras. Like now I understand this one better so the next time I get an, another one it will be a lot easier to get adjusted to it. So that's what I recommend to you. Start small. 
before I would use Logitech webcams like these. These will do the job as well. So just get started with as minimum as um, equipment as you can. And for memory cards, I use these SanDisk Ultras in the 32 gigabytes. They work extremely well. Then I can just take off this uh, off the camera and then upload the uh, videos to my computer for the next step. The next step, step number six, is to edit the video. Once my footage is uploaded to my computer, I can upload it to this editing software I use, which is called Filmora. And then from here, I will start dragging the clips down, adding transitions and text and different information along the way. As you see, I record in chunks, so I record my intro and then I record a couple tips at a time because this helps me keep the video flowing and to keep my thoughts together and also it makes this editing process a lot easier where I can just take one small clip, edit it, add a transition and then another one instead of just this large humongous clip that I don't even know where to start. So that makes it a lot easier. I really recommend you do that. Step number seven is to make the YouTube thumbnail. It takes a while for the video to finish rendering on Filmora. It takes anywhere from like an hour to an hour and a half. So while that's going, I start on my YouTube thumbnail. For the picture, usually I use PicMonkey to add filters to brighten it up a little bit. And then I just upload it to Canva to add the final text. I have many uh, videos on this and I will leave the playlist link down in the description if you want to learn how to use it. But basically it has all these elements and shapes, lines, pictures, different things you can add. So I'll just go ahead and work on that real quick. Step number eight is to write the description. This is another thing that I will work on while the video is done rendering on Filmora. I will work on this description. And for that, I use this Evernote note that I have ready to go. Everything is in place. All I have to do is come in here and change just a few things. So mainly it's this uh, main description on top, these timestamps I may have to change, and some of the resource I have to change. So I just do that. I go grab the links for everything I need so that it's ready to go as soon as my video is ready. Step number nine is to upload the edited YouTube video. So now that the video is ready to go on Filmora, I will come here, click this upload icon, and I will always set my video on private because I schedule them anyway, and it's just while I get everything, all the metadata in and everything. So you just click upload and go find your video. Now this part doesn't take that long at all. It takes anywhere from like 15 to 20 minutes or so. Once the video is done uploading on YouTube, step number 10 is to add the cards. So you come here to your videos and you click edit. And usually I work my way from right to left. For subtitles, sometimes I will pay Rev to um, do the subtitles for me, but not always. So I don't worry about that all the time. And then here's where I will do this step. 10 which is the cards so I play the whole video and along the way I add these relevant cards that talk about what I'm talking about in the video at certain points so that if someone wants to learn more about it they can go watch it basically they're just links to other videos so here's this journal writing video at 641 most likely I talked about something about journaling at 641 so that's the essence of cards and I also take this opportunity to make note of my timestamps so you know here on my description I have timestamps and tips just so if people want to skip to a certain part of a video they can and also it serves as SEO it serves as um, keywords for YouTube to know what my video is about so that's why I do this tips and timestamps it serves me it serves the viewer it serves everyone next up step number 11 is to add the end screens uh, end screens are again another way for your viewers to find more of your videos so here you can add up to four videos up to four elements so you can add a subscribe button in three videos or four videos if you want 
and that's what I do. I made a video about this last week, so if you want to learn more about end cards, how they work, how you can make one, and all of that, make sure to go watch that video. And finally, step number 12 is to input the final information and update the settings. So here I go to change image so that I can update my thumbnail. If not, they will give you one by default. So I go ahead and upload my own thumbnail here. I go ahead and set this to schedule. This one's already public because it's already um, on my channel. But if it wasn't, there'd be a schedule button here. So today is Monday, and on Mondays I make two videos for the following week, and that's where I schedule it. And then you can add your video to a playlist, and then I copy and paste my title, and copy and paste my description from Evernote. And then finally, I copy and paste my tags from Evernote. Remember this Evernote note? It really comes in handy because then I can just copy and paste. All right, and that's all. As you see, there's a lot of steps that you have to go through to finally publish a video, but the more you do it, the more used to um, you get to the process, so it becomes just a little bit easier. Not a lot, but it does become easier. I know that ever since I started making YouTube videos, I have a lot more respect for creators because I know the hard work that goes behind each video. But yeah, that's all for today. Make sure you like this video if you found it helpful and share it with a friend who may need it. You'll be helping them out and you'll be supporting this channel as well. And let's continue the conversation in the comments below. Let me know uh, if you have a channel or if you were planning on st um, starting a channel. Let me know your channel name and what's it all about. I'd love to check it out. So make sure to tell us about it in the comments below. And that's all for today. One more thing I would like to ask you. Uh, if you have any requests or any uh, types of videos that you'd like for me to make, make sure to leave that in the comments below as well. I have a lot of video ideas that I'd like to make, but first I'd like to get to the ones that y'all need. So make sure to let me know in the comments below. And that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.